series. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we are going to work on bow techniques. The very first technique that everybody learns is the long bow. And what is that called? Long and smooth legato. That is Italian legato. So let's play some legato notes on the G string. <laughs> over and over and keep in mind from the first tutorial that I did last time keep in mind to keep everything as smooth as possible no tension use gravity use the natural weight of your arm without pushing so just drop the bow if you're holding it like this same thing to keep uh, the tone quality and the volume of it, how loud it is, the same for, because it's, it was always louder here because the bow's heavier here and that's where my hand is and it would get kind of soft and like weak uh, on the tip. So again, just practice doing it over and over. So remember we talked about leaning outwards last time? You want your body to lean out when you're playing on the A string because it's really awkward to play this way and it hurts your shoulder. Your shoulder's in a very unnatural position like this. But if you're able to lean out, you can straighten. See how my elbow is straightening? And it's long and lean. Out. staccato, which are short notes, so even sound short, staccato. Now there's different kinds of staccato and there's also spiccato, right? So just for uh, simplicity's sake, let's just work on playing short notes. So short notes are when you play and you let go, right? Now depending Depending on the piece of music, depending on how fast the song is, sometimes you want your uh, bow to come off the string every for every note you play. So if you go off, you would go, you know, kind of comes off, or on, now here is something that uh, is very, very important. So if you look at my right arm, first of all, again, Always just constantly keep checking to make sure that there's no tension, there's no like ugh, gripping. We're not the Hulk, we're just trying to play the cello. So keep your arm smooth, gentle. Do you see what part of my hand is moving? I see this is what I see sometimes in students that are trying to play short notes. What's happening? My entire upper body is frozen. So we're not in the flow, we're not moving, we're completely frozen, like robot style, right? We don't want that because it causes tension and it just sounds really bad. So when that happens, the entire shoulder, our upper body sometimes, you want to keep the movement as small and as centralized as possible. So for me, when I play short notes, I try to keep it in the wrist. It's literally my wrist, that's all it is. And when it goes faster, right? So little, 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 tiny movements, tiny movements. You wanna be, you wanna use the smallest possible movements that you can for maximum effect because you're conserving energy, right? So. So 
what you want to do, just practice. You can put your uh, bow down in the middle of the bow. Pick any string you like. So let's use D string. Okay, now we want to start slow. Down. Up. I'm going to change your bow grip. So if you're doing it this way. Do you see how my fingers are relaxed so that they're slightly moving? They're kind of flowing with the bow, right? And all the movement is on my wrist. My elbow's not moving, my shoulder's not moving. down and what's up turn your bow this way down up down up down up down up down up down up left is down oh oh my gosh I've confused myself sorry guys oh, bad teacher okay left is down right is up left is down right is up left is down right is up right okay with a metronome so I have a metronome that I just set you start maybe at like 60 something very slow and you slowly increase speed and as you can see when I go faster and faster and faster it's still only my wrist that moves right It's not that easy. It takes many, many years. I've been doing this since I was seven and I'm 32. So please don't be discouraged. It takes time. It takes practice. Um, I practiced for eight hours every day from when I was seven years old. Um, and again, that's not to make you guys feel bad, but it's, it's no, it's to not make you feel bad because it does take a lot of time. And it took me a very long time to be able to play fast, to play smoothly. Um, and so the most important thing is to really put in that hard work and to put in the work because there will be results. That's what's fun about playing the cello or really playing anything or uh, really uh, putting energy into practicing something because there's you know there's a lot of things in life where there's no guarantees but you are guaranteed when you play the cello that if you put in the work and you're really focused and concentrated you are going to get better and you're gonna get really good so that's always fun I remind myself of that when I feel lazy or oh I don't feel like practicing I tell myself you know what Tina if you put the work in you're going to get rewarded for it. You know, you will get better. You will be able to play this new piece. You will be able to, you know, play faster or, or um, memorize this piece faster. So. Now, when you're shifting between strings and you're playing fast, that's when you want to start using the rest of your arm, right? So everything's in the wrist. So it's this hinge. It's like a little hinge in your shoulder, like a little quack quack, right? So you're going up and down like this, right? But the actual movement of going back and forth, up and down, it's not my shoulder. It's all in the wrist. That's how you play super, super fast because you can't possibly move your arm that fast because your arm is too big. You know, it's too heavy. Your wrist, on the other hand, you're not even trying. It's not like you're forcing it. You're just kind of like literally like blah, blah, blah. you're throwing your wrist back and forth. It's loose, right? So. combining long and short notes and different patterns in the same bow. So what do I mean by the same bow? I mean one bow stroke, playing maybe a short note, then a long note, then a short note, or something like this, right? So I'll do, let's do a long short for now. So everything 
is uh, thought out. It's not just random. We don't just randomly land wherever we stop and then fit the last note in. So you have to calculate in your mind where you want the next note to come in, right? And it gets more and more, of course, complicated when there's more notes. But for now, thankfully, there's only two. So I'm going to do a long note. And I want to stop when there's still enough room so I can get out a nice, clean, uh, short note, right? Stop. Stop. And when I, I find that if you lift off the string a little bit towards the end of the, of the long note, you have a smoother, so it's kind of like a, a curve, right? basic and like blah. Ideally, you want everything to be rounded. So. Okay, so uh, let's see. What if we want to put four short notes in one bow, so smooth short notes. So let's see. Same thing, we want to give each uh, note its fair share, so everybody gets a, uh, gets a quarter. You don't want to accidentally give too much of the first dude, and then the other notes are all squished in at the end, right? Because then it'll just sound really uh, awkward. <laughs> Right? We don't want that. So always keep in mind where you're going later. Keep in mind, plan for the future, <laughs> and you won't regret it. Right? So. Okay, so I don't use too much in the beginning because I know I'm going to need more for later. to a bow, right? So we want to divide it, halfway is three, so divide each one into thirds. Right, and so this takes over time if you're practicing an etude, uh, or if you're working on a piece and you see that there's eight notes or 16 notes uh, to a bow, you want to be careful to calculate and not to go, because sometimes the tendency is to go really fast in the beginning, because you're really excited, you want to start playing, and then before you know it, you're out of bow and you're at the very end, you're like, oh my god. Um, so be sure to keep in mind what you need to fit into one bow. So hopefully that was a useful kind of general overview of a couple of different bow techniques. Uh, if you have any other requests or specific questions about bowing techniques, please leave a comment below. Please also feel free to leave suggestions um, and requests for other tutorials that you might be interested in, whether it's about cello or a different area of music. I'm happy to do that for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate you and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Yeah.